today we're far, far away from our Paris studio. This capital of 8 million people, we're 2,600 metres above sea level. It's known as the gateway to South America. In this country, twice the size of France, they speak Spanish. And apparently, it's the best kind of Spanish. Bienvenidos a Colombia. Bienvenidos a Colombia. Bienvenidos a Colombia, chicos. Welcome to Colombia. Welcome to Colombia. You probably know Colombia for all the wrong reasons. Civil war, murder, cocaine, gangs, corruption and kidnapping. Not so long ago, that was a pretty accurate description. So as France 24 opens its fourth channel, this time in Spanish with the headquarters here in Bogota, we're going on a journey to discover how this country is healing and moving on, and how art and culture are part of this transformation. <laughs> Diana Valderrama is a journalist based in Bogota. It's my first time here in Bogota. Tell me about this city. Well, this city is a very contrasted city. Bogota, 30 years ago, there was a lot of violence. Right now, it's becoming a very secure capital. A lot of foreigners are coming. Contrast too, because of the weather. You can imagine Colombian city is very warm, but here it's very cold. And like in all Latin American countries, you have in one side very rich and very poor. But still, we are becoming one of the leading capitals in Latin America and we are very proud of it. Colombia's civil war lasted for 50 years. Thousands died, millions were displaced. There were kidnappings. A France 24 journalist was taken by the rebel group, the FARC, in 2012. But last year, a peace deal was signed between the government and the FARC. How have things changed since then? Well, things have changed very positively, but politically, we're still very complicated. People in the streets just want peace, and you can see that in art, in music, in every cultural expression. They want peace, and they want that peace to last. Where are we then, Diana, now? So this is a square that is called El Chorro de Quevedo. This is where Bogota was founded. So this is Julian Conrado. He's well known as the singer of FARC. So he is a guerrillero. He thinks about the social conflict, the so a lot of social and political things, and also for the peace right now. I think it's important to reconcile the country so that people know what Julian did in the past and what he's singing about now and that he's carrying a message of peace. I don't think it's right for an ex-FARC soldier to sing in public. Why should they receive our support? I think it's wrong. I believe it's important that in these spaces, ex-guerrilla fighters can feel integrated. As a guerrilla fighter for the left-wing rebel group, the FARC, he was once wanted for alleged kidnap, homicide and forced recruitment. Exiled in Venezuela, he spent three years in prison. What's your mission with your music? My mission nowadays is to encourage people to fight for a better life, a fight for the recognition of their rights. I use my songs to denounce events that are going on in my country, such as corruption cases and human rights violations. I call upon my people to stand up and fight for the rights they deserve. 
por los derechos que le corresponden. So what would you say to people who say a former FARC member shouldn't be playing music in Bogota? Well, I would tell them to let us sing and that they should listen to what we're singing about. If they would listen to me, they could understand and accept a little bit. They would be filled with this feeling of love, and that would be great for them to learn how to love themselves. What role does music and culture play in the peace process? I think my music contributes to the building of a stable and long-term peace in my country. Is there anything that inspires us more for peace than the feeling of love? All those inspired by love will walk towards peace. Love does not harm anyone. Para mí esto no es obra del diablo, tampoco de Dios. De la avaricia de unos canallas nace la maldad. Quiero en vez de un fusil en mis manos llevar una flor. Busca de mis bolsillos nuevas de otro cariño. Pero se en la sola pasta sonrisa me delata. Singing about politics since the 90s. Grammy Award winning Atercio Pelados. Alternative rockers making their voices heard across the world, singing for peace. You're ambassadors for peace for Amnesty International. Do you sing about peace in your music? For us, living in a country like Colombia, it's difficult not to be exposed to our social and political situation. We write many songs that deal with that situation, with war, with the subject of those who've disappeared. But since we have had this problem for so long, we need to make music about other topics in order to escape this black hole we've been in. How do you see your role then as artists, as musicians in the peace process? Perhaps you won't be able to change much with one song, but in the past 25 years, we've been making music, singing constructive ideas, criticizing, giving our point of view. Perhaps we sow good things. Mira la esencia, no las apariencias. El cuerpo es solo un estuche y los ojos la ventana de nuestra alma aprisionada. Mira la esencia, no las apariencias. Mira. So what are we doing in this arty residential area of Bogota? Well, you have tried Colombian coffee and you have listened to Colombian music, but you need to see another of our specialities. Let me show you. Welcome to the set of the daily TV show Night School. It's one of hundreds of telenovelas produced here every year. Colombia is number one in Latin America for TV series, exporting these shows across the world, dealing with subjects from drugs and violence to love and romance. My name is Esther Cavalier. Hasta hace poco dicté cátedra en una de las universidades privadas más importantes de este país. Have you been in a lot of telenovelas? Yes. I've been doing this for 20, almost 25 years. This one is about in that school. People study at night and work by, yeah. during the day. So it's not like the love story with a poor girl and a rich guy, which is like the typical melodrama. Because I thought lots of the telenovelas were kind of about crime and about drugs. No. That's not the main subject. No, no. Of course, we do have that, but I'm trying not to do the typical ones. Not narcos, nor uh, poor girl <laughs> and the rich guy. It's like we are selling this image 
to the world. And Narcos is like a big success, and Escobar is like, wow, everyone knows about Escobar. So it's like, ah, that's what Colombians are, and that's what Colombians do, and that's it. And it's not only that. I think that telenovelas reflect a lot uh, the moment we are living. So right now, we have a lot of telenovelas that reflect the peace process, for example, La Niña. It, yeah. it goes from a girl that belonged to the guerrilla, and then she, she, came, she came to the civil life, and it was very accepted, it was very popular, it has a lot of prizes, and I think it's a reflect of the life. And right now, Narcos belongs to the past, so we have turned the page. Soy el profesor Mario Quiñones, director del programa. Mi vida es la administración y la educación. As an actor, do you think you have a role in helping improve the image of Colombia for the rest of the world? Of course, for more than 20 years, we've been trying to show a different image of Colombia. Colombia, like all countries, has positive and negative points, but we're most known for the latter. I had the pleasure to travel to more than 130 countries to show the positive face of Colombia. For me, it was an honor, a joy, to tell the world that we have other dreams and realities. We're not the people you think we are. We're not all Pablo Escobar. He was just one man. En la nocturna todos tendrán que mirarse a sí mismos para poder aprender de los demás. Well, this is big button ants. <laughs> big bottomed ants. Yes, big bottom ants. And what's it? Colombians eat this. Oh. Yes. Colombians sí. eat ants. It has a lot of protein. Okay, I understand. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna try one? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it's weird, actually. popular restaurant here in Bogota. It is called Andres Carne de Res and it's kind of a melting pot of all the regions of Colombia. So you have food from everywhere, from Colombia, the music, and even the decoration is from all over the country. So if you wanted to know about Colombia, this is the place to be. I've had a really amazing time here in Bogota. How are you feeling about the future of the country? very positive right now. I am feeling the changes of um, the society of Colombia and I think if we keep going into that voice we're going to find out that peace that we wanted since 50 years ago and we are not very far away from that. I hope so. In our next show from Colombia, we'll be in the country's second city, Medellin. Once home to one of the world's most infamous criminals, Pablo Escobar. 25 years ago, it was described as the most dangerous city in the world. We discover how, with the help of the arts, it's turning itself around.